Hi, Mark Donovan here from Falcon Imagery, and today I'm going to go over the major engine components in this Piper Warrior. Hi, Mark Donovan here from Falcon Imagery, and today I'm going to show you how to pre-flight an aircraft, in particular this uh, Piper Warrior behind me. Um, every aircraft is different. Um, the uh, place you really want to look for, uh, for knowing how to pre-flight an aircraft, is to check the specific pilot operating handbook for the exact aircraft you're flying, including down to the serial number. Um, Typically, an aircraft will have a checklist inside it that's developed from the POH, and that's what I've got here in front of me. And we're going to show you how I go through a pre-flight of this Piper Warrior. All right, so the first thing we do is we just check our hobs and our tack time and make sure they match the book uh, for checking out the aircraft. Uh, then we'll make sure we put the emergency brake on by pulling up the lever, putting our thumb in position, pulling up on the flap handle, make sure it's all the way up so the flaps are uh, all the way down. Um, we then come over here and look at our pedostatic system, particularly our alternate pedostatic. There's a little uh, wire underneath that we just want to make sure it's going horizontally. Looking at right wing, we've got our nav and wing strobe. We have our beacon up at the top and our navigation rear light. Walking around to the left wing. We have our navigation light and strobe light working as well. We'll check the stall horn indicator. Yep, the horn is working. And we'll check our landing light to make sure it's working. We also check the enunciator panel and make sure those enunciators do work. This one is no longer valid because we no longer have a vacuum pump in the airplane. If we plan to do any IFR flying or um, if we have any concern of possible moisture that could freeze, we would turn the pitot heat on as well and check that for part of our pre-flight. So one of the very first things you do when you're pre-flighting aircraft is to make sure the pod operating handbook and weight and balance are in the aircraft. In addition, we make sure the airworthiness certificate and registration are in the aircraft. And between the pod operating handbook, the weight and balance, and the registration and airworthiness certificate, we've um, ensured that all of the aero documents associated with the aircraft are in the aircraft. Now I'll grab my fuel sump out of the side pocket of the aircraft, and we'll begin to do our pre-flight. So when you're brand new at this, you're gonna to wanna to follow your checklist step-by-step um, step around the aircraft. Once you've done it a few times and you know what to do, basically you do the flow, and we go basically counterclockwise around the aircraft, from the right wing to the nose, to the left wing, to the empennage area, and then back. And then we'll step back and we'll go through the various segments of the aircraft and confirming that indeed we did do everything that we uh, should do as part of the checklist. So we're gonna confirm that their flaps um, are down. They should have some play, just a little bit of play. Uh, we'll make sure that the ailerons move freely up and down. As we do this, we'll also check the underside to make sure the linkage is connected and the uh, piano hinges are all working correctly. We'll also take a look at the hinges down on the flaps to make sure they're not disconnected or have any problems um, as well. As we walk around the plane, we'll look at the wing edge, make sure there's no major dents or damage to the wing. As we come around, we'll go underneath the wing. We'll make sure the vent line, fuel vent line is not clogged. We'll sump some fuel by just pushing up taking a fuel sample. We want to make sure that it's all blue. This is 100 low lead gas or ab gas. And we just want to make sure it's all blue. If there was white in there, that would indicate there's potentially water and it would be denser. It would sit at the bottom. We're also looking for any sediment. While we're down here, we inspect the quality and shape of the tire, make sure that it's not worn. Uh, we look at the brake pad, brake pads, the caliper, and the disc, make sure that there's uh, no uh, hydraulic fluid leaking. And the strut has roughly four inches uh, visible silver area. We'll then pour our fuel that we just sumped back into the aircraft. And we just pour it in. We don't want to throw this on the ground. We continue on, we make sure the air vent Intake is clear of any ob any objects. We'll come over to the engine compartment area. We'll 
we'll inspect the engine area, uh, making sure there's no bird nests or rat nests or anything else in there that looks like it shouldn't be there. We'll check the engine mounts, make sure they're secure. Uh, we'll inspect the oil. We're gonna have at least five and a half in the aircraft. Let's make sure all the leads uh, look in decent shape and they're all properly connected. Coming around to the nose of the aircraft, we'll inspect in here the alternator belt to make sure there's some tension on it. We'll inspect the surface of the prop to make sure there's no nicks or cracks in it. We'll look out the spinner, make sure it's all smooth, no dents in that. We'll take a look at the air intake, make sure it's not been blocked. We'll reach down and grab the exhaust pipe, make sure it's firmly in place. We'll look at the nose strut, the nose wheel, uh, the nose tire, make sure it's in good condition. And we'll come around to the other side of the cowling. We'll inspect the engine for any foreign objects, such as bird nests, rat nests, or other things that shouldn't be there. We'll make sure the lead lines all look good from the um, magnetos to the spark plugs. Um, there's no engine oil dripping in the bay of the aircraft. Uh, we'll inspect the um, hydraulic reservoir for brake fluid. It's okay, which it is. And then we'll close the compartment. Uh, when we close this, we want to make sure that there's um, the, the tabs go underneath the lips before closing and locking the locking it in place. We'll also sump down here, and we'll just take a look to make sure that fuel is blue, which it all is. There's no sediment. There's no water, and we'll just pour that into the left tank. Coming over here, again, we're looking at the tire and the wheel itself, uh, the strut, the brake caliber right here, and the disc, and the pads are right in there, and then the brake line over here, making sure there's no leaks. Again, we have a fuel sump right there as well, that we check the fuel. And then we have a vacuum vent line right there that we're inspecting to make sure there's no clog in that. Otherwise we would get potentially um, the engine would shut off on us due to a uh, vacuum that would form if that vent line was clogged. So also what we have underneath the wing is the pedostatic vein or fin. Uh, you'll notice there's a small hole right there. This is for the ram air coming in. We have a hole down the underside right here at the bottom for uh, pedo heat to drip any moisture or ice that might build up inside the, the fin uh, due to rain. And here at the very back of the fin, there's a small here hole at the bottom, and this is for a static um, port. And so between the uh, ram port on the front side of the fin and the static port, uh, these control our pedostatic um, inputs for our airspeed indicator, our vertical speed indicator, and altimeter. We'll continue to walk this edge of the left wing, making sure that all looks good, no dents, no major damage. Uh, we'll again check the ailerons as well, make sure they move freely. We'll look up there, we can see the yoke moving in there left to right. We'll go underneath, we'll check the uh, linkage, connecting rods, and the piano hinges. We'll also look at the flaps. Uh, make sure those hinges all look good. And we just kind of move the flaps a little bit, make sure they're in, in working order. Uh, we'll come up and look at our comm antennas. These are the two white antennas here. We'll look at our ELT, emergency locating uh, transmitter uh, antenna. We look at the VOR antennas up here. Those are those two silver ones coming off the uh, vertical stabilizer. We look at the overall integrity of the vertical stabilizer and the rudder. We'll come back here and we'll move our stabilator up and down. Notice I'm pulling on the stabilator itself, not on the anti-servo trim tab, which is right here. Uh, 
that trim tab is used to relieve pressures when we're um, trying to hold the aircraft in a particular attitude, like a climb or descend. Again, just overall looking at the natural, the integrity of the aircraft uh, in this, what they call the empennage section, the back half of the aircraft. Work our way to the um, front of the aircraft or the fuselage and make sure that the door is locked on the baggage area. Now that pretty much concludes doing the actual pre-flight, but what we want to do now is take a look at our checklist and kind of step back from the aircraft and make sure we look at every section of the checklist and confirm we actually did do every item in the checklist. And if we didn't, we go back and actually check those things that we missed. So stepping back away from the aircraft in front of it, we come down to our checklist. We again look at inside the cabin area to make sure we didn't miss anything. And we turn the page and we look at all the items in the right wing, the nose of the aircraft, the left wing, and the overall fuselage slash empennage area uh, to make sure we haven't missed anything in the checklist. So with the pre-flight complete and confirmed in the checklist, uh, we've confirmed that this aircraft is airworthy and ready to fly. And that wraps up pre-flighting an aircraft, particularly this Piper Warrior. If you have any questions or any comments, feel free to leave them below. And if you like this video, hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel so you get notified on my next video.